Hello, my name is Sandra Elliott, and I'm the English Learner Intervention Support Specialist for the Mississippi Department of Education. This is our fourth installment of our English Learner Literacy Tips of the Month, and during today's presentation, we'll look at phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, and strategies and activities related to them for supporting English learners. Our vision at the Mississippi Department of Education is to create a world-class educational system that gives students the knowledge and skills to be successful in college and the workforce and to flourish as parents and citizens. Our mission is to provide leadership through the development of policy and accountability systems so that all students are prepared to compete in the global community. Our State Board of Education has a five-year strategic plan which includes the following goals. All students proficient and showing growth in all assessed areas. Every student graduates from high school and is ready for college and career. Every child has access to a high quality early childhood program. Every school has effective teachers and leaders. Every community effectively uses a world-class data system to improve student outcomes. And every school and district is rated C or higher. Our goals for today's session are to help you to define phonological awareness and phonics, review the difference between phonological awareness and phonemic awareness, explore phonological awareness strategies to use with English learners, and to explore phonics activities to use with English learners. Phonological awareness and phonics. What is phonological awareness? It's the ability to identify, think about, and manipulate the parts of words in a language. It encompasses understandings of word awareness, syllables, onsets and rhymes, and phonemes. It's one of the best predictors of how well children will learn to read and the student's success in spelling acquisition. Phonological versus phonemic awareness. Phonological awareness contains phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness requires students to attend to, think about, or intentionally manipulate individual speech sounds in spoken words and syllables. Phonemic awareness is acquired after awareness of larger linguistic units. Phonological awareness is a broad topic. No writing takes place in phonological awareness, and it primarily encompasses being able to manipulate sounds, words, or parts of words. Remember, phonological awareness activities can be done in the dark. So why does it matter? Phonological awareness is the foundation for spelling and word recognition skills. Some of the challenges for English learners are that students might not be able to distinguish or produce a new sound in a second language. If the targeted phoneme is not found in your EL student's native language, they may have difficulty distinguishing the phoneme auditorily, and they may also struggle with pronouncing the phoneme. It's especially important that ELs receive explicit instruction in these phonemes. EL students need to be familiar with the sounds of English before they can develop phonological awareness. Teachers can teach phonemic awareness while also explicitly teaching vocabulary words, their meaning, and their pronunciation to English learners. Students who struggle to hear and manipulate phonemes in spoken words may struggle with understanding how phonemes relate to letters in written words. What to consider when teaching phonological awareness to English learners? Research shows English learners respond well to word games and word walls when these activities are consistent and focus on familiar sounds and letters. Poems and songs with their rhythm and repetition are easily memorized and should be used to teach phonological awareness and print concepts to English learners. Phonological awareness experiences should help develop positive feelings towards learning a new language. The teacher should avoid drill and rote memorization activities. Engaging the students in playful and fun activities will promote an environment where students will be comfortable playing and taking risks with the language. Be prepared for individual differences. 
When we do this, this allows us to avoid making rigid judgments about individual children based on their language proficiency level. English learners' development of phonological awareness can differ from that of native speakers because of their varying ability to discriminate discrete sounds of the target language. So what is phonics? Phonics is the connection between phonemes and graphemes. The approach to reading and spelling instruction that directly teaches students to use the sound letter relationships to spell. Phonics is one of the best predictors of how well children will learn to read and the student's success in spelling acquisition. So what does it matter? Reading development relies on the understanding that letters and letter patterns represent the sounds of spoken language. Some of the challenges for English learners are that students with limited literacy in their native language may struggle to put together the sound symbol relationship at the same time they are learning new words and new sounds. In addition, it's difficult for students to distinguish phonetic concepts in unfamiliar vocabulary words. Here we see a visual representation of how phonological awareness and phonics work together and build on one another. In the first image, we see that to understand phonemes, we are using our ears to hear the individual phonemes or sounds when they're spoken. As we progress, we introduce the grapheme or letter symbol for each phoneme, using voice to speak the sounds ears to hear the sounds, and eyes to read the letter symbols for each sound. Finally, we have just the graphemes. We're able to read the letter symbols and know that sounds or phonemes they represent. Phonological awareness strategies. Explicit instruction. Take a few minutes at the beginning of class or in small groups demonstrating and reinforcing the correct production of the sound. Model mouth placement and help students identify if the sound is voiced or unvoiced. When working with phonological awareness, it's important to make sure that the students are familiar with whatever words you're using to teach the phonological awareness concept. Another strategy for phonological awareness is the use of Elkonin boxes for segmentation. To do this, we show students a picture of a familiar pre-learned object. Model saying the word slowly while simultaneously moving a chip, felt square, penny, or button into each sound box. Have students practice slowly saying the sound while moving the marker. So if we're going to work on identifying the phonemes in the word bed, maybe we've already read the book The Napping House and provided visuals and taught vocabulary to our students so that they have a concept of the word bed. Once they have a concept for the word, we would show them a picture of a bed and model saying the word slowly, enunciating each phoneme. As we do so, we would move a chip into each Elkonin sound box. So as the teacher, I would say bed, b, e, d, bed. Always finish by saying the word fluently. Then students would repeat, practicing segmenting the phonemes and moving the chips. In addition to assisting with decoding, these boxes specifically help English learner students by helping them to break newly acquired English words into individual sounds, which will assist them with accurate pronunciation and later with spelling. Another strategy is to identify syllables by clapping out names. To do this, we model saying the name of a student syllable by syllable, clapping each time you say a syllable. Repeat with multiple names. After saying the name and clapping, ask students, how many syllables do you hear? Have students practice using their own name. Some students cannot keep the rhythm by clapping. 
Another way for them to identify syllables is to jaw drop by placing a hand under their chin as they say the name. Each time their chin hits their hand, it counts as a syllable. Older students who might feel awkward clapping can tap two fingers on a desk as they say the names and count the syllables. Once students can count syllables in names, have them practice counting syllables in other familiar words as well. Again, this activity will help English learner students with correct pronunciation as well as in identifying word parts, which will also assist in decoding, spelling, and understanding. Another phonological awareness strategy is called Odd Word Out, which helps with phoneme identification. Identify a targeted phoneme, beginning, middle, or end sound, and then create a list of 10 sets of three words. Example, dog, donut, hat. And then find objects or pictures for each word on your lists. Have students listen as you say the three words, trying to identify which one has a different targeted phoneme. Once students know which word is the odd word out, they can pull the picture or object representing that word out of the bag, showing it to other students. So here's an example of odd word out. The words are dog, donut, and hat. Which one does not have the same initial phoneme d sound as the other words? Hat, here it is. After students identify which word is out, the teacher can extend the lesson by having students identify which phoneme is different. So with our example, the student might continue by saying hat is out because it begins with an initial phoneme sound while donut and dog begin with an initial phoneme d sound. Not only will this help EL students practice specific phonemes, but it also gives an opportunity to apply out understanding of English vocabulary words. Read-alouds can be used to help students identify alliteration, rhymes, and even sound substitution. EL students can also practice the phonological concept of words making sentences by counting words in a familiar sentence after hearing it read aloud. In addition, our ELs can hear modeling of good fluent reading from the teacher. To do this, choose books appropriate for the phonemic or phonological awareness focus, which encourages the students to play with sounds. Read the book to students for enjoyment while serving as a language model. When you encounter the targeted focus, stop and ask students to identify the focus skill in the text. Remember that since phonological awareness is an in-the-dark or auditory-only skill, these read-alouds would not be where the teacher would model tracking or highlight the graphemes used in the focus skill. So here are three examples of read-alouds. The Z was zapped is an example which uses alliteration. If I had a paca is an example which uses rhyme and repetition. The hungry thing is an example which uses rhyme and phoneme substitution. Phonics strategies. Making words with cubes. For this game, students will take turns being the player and the recorder. Use wooden cubes or blank dice to write letters. On one cube, write vowels on all sides so that a vowel is always landed on. On the other cubes, put a variety of consonants. Depending on the level of your students, you can have three to six cubes to allow students to sound out CVC words or work with multiple syllable words. If you're working with multiple syllable words, make sure to have at least two vowel cubes. Students will take turns shaking the cubes and spilling on the table. After spilling the cubes, students will move them to build words and read the words to their partner. Students can turn this into a true game and keep score. Every time a student builds a word, if it's a real word, they get a point for every letter they used. Students can be challenged by adding a time limit to find and build words. This type of game is especially good for EL students. 
Not only does it help them practice a specific skill, but it also enhances their use of social English by having them talk to and interact with other students. Sight word pickup. For this activity, place two to four previously taught word cards face up on the table and prompt students by saying things such as, pick up the words that begin with the vowel sound of r, as in rabbit. Pick up words that rhyme with blank. Pick up words that end with the t sound, as in rabbit. Pick up words that end with blank. After students can successfully locate the correct word, switch roles and let the student be the teacher and direct which card should be picked up. This type of activity will help English learners learn English sounds that may be different from those of their first language, as well as providing a low-risk opportunity to practice specific skills previously taught. Word sorts. Provide students with cards of previously taught words. Students will work in groups to sort the words according to word patterns. Have students start with an open sort, allowing them to determine how words should be grouped and what patterns they see. Then, provide them with guidelines specific to the learning target. For example, the guidelines could be to sort by open syllables or closed syllables. Other possible sorts include by short or long vowels, by digraphs, clusters, rhyming words, or blends. In upper grades, students could sort by affixes or by Greek or Latin roots. Once students have sorted the cards, have them discuss the sorts and make observations about the sorts. If this is a center activity, the students will write the words from their sort in a notebook and then take them to the reading group for further discussion. An extension could be to allow students to cut words out of newspapers or magazines to add to their sorts, gluing them onto construction paper. Again, having students work in groups will encourage conversations between students and allow EL students to hear fluent speakers, practice newly acquired English in a low-risk environment, as well as apply English phonics skills previously taught in class. For additional ideas and strategies to support phonological awareness and phonics with EL students, please reference the Mississippi Department of Education's Literacy Focus of the Month in Action, Phonological Awareness and Phonics, and the Mississippi Department of Education's Literacy Focus of the Month Manual for September. Additional resources for teachers of EL students include the OG Card Deck app, and the Florida Center for Reading Research Student Centers for Phonological Awareness and Phonics. Additional resources for teachers of EL students used in this PowerPoint came from articles from Coloring Colorado and the Broward Co County Multicultural ESOL Services Education Department and ReadingRockets.org. Again, thank you so much for participating in our webinar today. We hope that you have found it helpful. If you have any further questions or would like professional development for your staff, please contact our office. Our English learner team is happy to support you in any way that we can.